Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to A Hat in Time, or should I say, uh, welcome back to, uh, my one and only solo session. Well, hopefully my one and only solo session of A Hat in Time for SGB here, because... Okay, so, uh, where do I begin with this story? <laughs> so, originally, uh, this is a couple of weeks back, I want to say even close to a month ago, we recorded more of Chapter 2 for A Hat in Time, because, you know, we wanted to... Uh, get that up and running and make sure we got enough uh, parts in the backlog to last us for a couple of weeks But unfortunately, uh, we had a few scheduling conflicts here and there And at one point we only had enough time for myself Ellen, and Sabrina to meet on a Wednesday for like an hour and a half So that only gave us enough time to record two levels for chapter two One is the level that we're doing now murder on the Owl Express and the other being the big parade uh, the level we can do right after this. So the session was only an hour long, and I thought for life of me I gave this session to Sabrina to edit, but apparently I did not because she gave me a call a couple of days ago saying, uh, where did the parts go? <laughs> because when we uploaded, uh, I think it was part eight or nine last week, uh, folks said that in the comment section that you guys skipped two levels. You guys skipped Murder on the Owl Express and the Big Parade. And I was like, no, we didn't. No, I would never skip those levels. It's the Murder on the Owl Express is one of my favorite levels in the entire game. Why would I ever skip that? No, no. So I'm frantically checking my folders and all that sort of shit. And I'm really, it's not here. Where did it go? Okay, now I can't even find the video file. I can't find the audio file either. So... I'm perplexed as to where it went. My guess is I might have accidentally deleted it. I might have mistaken it for an earlier session that we did, uh, maybe a week or two uh, before then, and I, I did a stupid. I hate when I do that sort of shit because that has kind of killed the momentum of uh, Let's Plays earlier. I think something happened similarly to like the Simon's Quest playthrough for Halloween a couple of years back, and I hate when I do that shit because it's such a forehead-slapping moment. So here I am, for just this part only, giving you guys the two levels that we sort of, like, ignored unintentionally. Murder on the Owl Express and the Big Parade, continuing on with Chapter 2 for Hat in Time. And uh, Murder on the Owl Express is one of my favorite levels in the game, as I said earlier. It goes, I love the aesthetic, I love the sense of humor, because basically uh, we're continuing uh, making movies with the conductor and DJ Grooves. This is a conductor level. And Murder on the Owl Express is essentially, uh, it is a hybrid of platforming and stealth as uh, Chapter 2 likes to focus on. But you know, now we get like the old timey uh, look and feel of the level. We get we get the crows, which every once in a while you come close to them, they will interrupt whatever you're doing and ask you some really silly questions. My favorite being this one, where you have to enter a captcha, uh, which I think spells out DC before I lose. Which you're a fucking rage quitter if you do that. By the way, you piece of shit. <laughs> um, but after you uh, type in the words, I don't think I don't think it matters if you get the words right or not. The guy tells you thank you for accepting the terms and conditions to the agreement. You you know you say wait wait what are you talking about? And they go behind the backboard and oh shit, <laughs> there's a big ass terms and conditions on the backboard. That's great. That's really fantastic. There's a lot of these throughout the entire level where you can uh, pretty much give them whatever you want because they're mad lips. So they don't actually say what you type out. Because they always give you like the Tim Allen impressions, like ooh, 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 if you uh, type in whatever you want. So yeah, I mean the, your uncle sister's maiden name. What the hell is that? Oh, it's steamed hands because that's what I remember. That's what Elliot Sabrina wanted me to say because memes are funny. And I, mean, I, I named the cat Blue or my, my pet, I should say. I named Blue because I wasn't feeling well. <laughs> and uh, she stopped laughing at me. Uh, and then uh, the superhero name, Super Dickhead. I'm sorry, Super Dikeet. I should I should uh, correct myself there. I don't know why I want you to be for uh, Dickhead. This is the one where everyone kind of has the same mindset for. It's like, what body part of yours are you most ashamed of? Uh, everyone says penis, dick. I want a little original with my dick, but whatever. I always I, I suck at math. <laughs> if it wasn't obvious enough, I'm not really uh, uh, swimming in creative juices with this sort of shit. So, the uh, level doesn't really begin until you get to a certain... You get, pretty much you get to the front of the train, uh, and that's where uh, the real meat of the mission begins. Uh, so you might be noticing that I'm, uh, I'm wearing a Sonic hat. <laughs> because uh, one of the things that... Uh, well, this can kind of go lead into an entire discussion itself, because... Uh, 
it, it's <laughs> it's been pretty obvious that this playthrough has had its share of hiccups. And I'm not talking about just from recording wise, I'm more just talking about like gameplay designs and just like mechanically. This game has been giving me a little problem, uh, no, a few problems here and there. Uh, we've been recording this off of my uh, my gaming laptop, which is, you know, it's it's a, it's a pretty sturdy piece of equipment. It's, it's not the best laptop in the world, but it can get shit done. Uh, and we've been using that to record the game. Problem is that, uh, I want to say it's the mods problem, but things have been kind of kooky here and there. Don't forget the beginning of the Let's Play begins with me missing my fucking body. Like, it's I'm nothing but a floating head. And I would have gladly kept it like that, but you know, it's kind of disorienting. I kind of need my body to see where I'm going for platform positioning and other shit. Uh, but uh, we've had a few things not load correctly here and there. Uh, the one the thing that drove me up the wall the most was my save file suddenly going missing after I had mods enabled. And I finally found out uh, after doing a quick Google search that when you uh, apt for the mod version of this game, uh, the Hat in Time becomes a Hat in Time beta, and it makes a separate save folder. So your uh, your save folder, your original save file is not lost, it's just converted into another file. So what you have to do is that you have to go to like your the Steam root folder, go inside where the Hat in Time uh, configuration files, and rename your old save file into the new save file, and then your progress will be restored. I didn't know that for the longest time, and because of that, we had to like restart a few levels here and there like a billion times because... It, it seemed like every time I wanted to uninstall or reinstall a new mod, things would get lost in translation, and I, I didn't understand what was happening. Uh, but that's just on save files. You know, sometimes uh, ge level geometry wouldn't load. Uh, some other things, like a few graphical, uh, graphical glitches would happen here and there. I was confused, because none of this happened when I was recording the game for the review I did on Some Call Me Johnny a couple of months ago. That, on the other, that, uh, however, was on my desktop. My desktop is way more powerful than my laptop. Maybe, I'm, I'm, but then I'm not sure if it's a stability issue or a compatibility issue. I don't know. But since then, uh, a hat in time has gotten a major update where now you don't need to, lo uh, you no longer have to apply for the beta version to get mods. Mods are now officially integrated into the PC version of the game. So you can access the workshop from within, you can download all sorts of mods from the Steam Workshop, which I heavily recommend you do. The Sonic Cat, for instance, is one of those mods. And it's not just cosmetic. It, it, there, there's an actual gameplay programming inside it. Like, the Sonic Cat is pretty much a super sprint hat. You hold that button down, and you go super fucking fast. With the, the only thing that's missing is a boost animation. You know, it's surreal. Uh, one of the one of my favorite items that I've been using this entire game actually is uh, Lilac's headpiece. Those little two pieces I have in my ears right now that kind of look like teardrops. That gives you Lilac Cyclone from Freedom Planet, and I love it because it's essentially, you know, it gives you a triple jump on on top of your double jump dive mechanic. You get so much horizontal distance from it. You, you know, I really wish console users could benefit from all of these cool little things you can add into the game because uh, it, it's not just even mods. You know, full out levels have been designed by a hat in time uh, fans and all that sort of thing and you can make an entirely new game just for mods alone from what people have made in fact uh, at the time of this recording uh the hat in time developers uh, gears for breakfast are holding a, a modding contest where i think the grand prize is like a thousand bucks if you make a level they really like you know and again you can put so much modding into this game to make it a completely different experience. This is really cool. And the game itself already as is is a fantastic game. So if you want more on top of that, you got to get the PC version of this game. But I stress it has to be the PC version of this game because the console console owners are only getting the bare experience. But again, there's nothing wrong with that because again, a hat in time as is is great. But it could be more <laughs> if you just get the PC version. Anyway, back to the level at hand because I got I got to keep I got to fill the time. We got like we still got uh, this is a 27 minute long part. Might be 27, 23 seconds because of the damn man car at the end of the screen. But now the real meat of the level begins. Basically, when you get to the front of the car, you get this mysterious call from this gravelly voice sounding dude. I, I don't know what his, his, his origins are or anything like that. But a murder has happened on the Owl Express. It's, it's almost like it's the name of the damn level. Murder on the Owl Express. So we got a murder. We got to find who the culprit is. But in order to find the culprit, to identify the culprit, we have to scour the train and look for pieces of evidence. I believe there are... I want to say six pieces of evidence total. You only need one to finish the level, 
but you are encouraged to find the others. One, because uh, it increases your score. If you want the conductor to win the movie award, you're going to have to find all pieces of evidence. And also be on the lookout for these tokens that are in the image of uh, said movie director. So in a conductor level, the token will be the shape of conductor's head. Uh, you find those, you get a bonus to your end score at the end of this. Because again, these, these are all technically movies in the making. So you get those movie credits at the end of the level. Now, uh, despite this, despite what you may think, this is not a timed level per se. The clock going, uh, the, the clock progressing is scripted. Every time you enter a certain door, the clock will advance uh, by like 15 minutes, but it won't end until you either like go through all the doors that like advance the clock or uh, maybe until you find all pieces of evidence either way uh, because I've had a run where I've only found like five of the six pieces of evidence and I wasn't able to choose this one culprit and I was kind of sad about that because it was one of my favorite like uh, culprits in the uh, in the game but uh, basically what we're doing here is we're looking for evidence but call of the crows are scouring the train looking for evidence themselves and don't worry they can't actually like get the evidence before you do it. it's just they're just there to be a uh, nuisances because you see the spotlights in front of them if you stand in front of the spotlight for too long you get caught so to speak and you're you are sent back to the beginning of that area and you also lose some health so it's essentially getting hit uh, but uh, try not to be too stressed out because the they're pretty forgiven. The cone is pretty forgiven. You have to be in the spotlight for a certain amount of time. I think like a full second before you're sent back. Uh, otherwise, you can like you can just clip the spotlight and you'll get the exclamation point, but it won't count because you're already out of the cone's vision uh, before they have a chance to act. And basically, the level is just you looking around for evidence. Uh, looking for keys, unlocking uh, certain doors, and then getting into the next area. So you see, we got we entered the right door. Now the clock is automatically advancing like like ten minutes. So we got thirty owl minutes left. And here, this is like this is probably the most blatant uh, Metal Gear callback. I mean, we saw a, we saw a TV monitor uh, in one of the earlier rooms that was pretty blatantly the Metal Gear Solid title screen, but it was like a dog in the front. Uh, but now this we have this area here, which looks like it was inspired by the uh, the naval ship in Metal Gear Solid 2: Sons of Liberty, the one the, that one the the marine ship that was hosting a uh, uh, Metal Gear Ray, because you got these crows here in the bottom floor that are lined up just like the the marines were, uh, listening to I, I think it was a captain uh, giving a speech. And so I'm wondering, like, do we have like a? We only have a certain amount of time, uh, even longer, if he has if he has time to fit in a joke or two for his speech. I'm not sure. Interesting little glitch here I found in this part right here, where uh, I get caught while I'm hanging on a ledge, and I'm sent back to the room, but it never reset my ledge grabbing animation. And I thought that was, this caught me by surprise. That never happened. That had never happened to me before. And in fact, it's it's a, it's not supposed to happen. It's illegal because you can hear the police sirens uh, <laughs> coming from me in the background. Oh my god, I cannot wait to get out of this place. <laughs> I mean, I, I've, I've loved this house for like the last two years, but the noise levels have gotten ridiculous because I live in a pretty busy street, so traffic is like non-stop, I swear to Christ. There is something happening in this area every time, you know. So uh, we're going to be moving to a little quieter location in the next couple of weeks, and hopefully that won't impede the progress of SGB or some call me Johnny for too long, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but anyway, uh, that, that glitch, the ledge glitch caught me off guard because I never experienced that before, and I, I was wondering, like, okay, so I'm hanging in midair uh, with nothing, so if I pull myself up, will I now be able to walk on an invisible floor? I was kind of hoping that would happen, unfortunately, no. It just, uh, everything uh, works as normal. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> this guy on the phone will continuously hound you, and unfortunately, the, uh, the last clue, one of the last clues that we need is in the hands of our sweet little dog, Bluch. But we gotta save him. He's hang he's a wood cutout hanging conveniently over a wood cutting machine. So we gotta go rescue him. This is actually this doesn't take very long at all. You just gotta climb a few platforms here. And then just hit the switch and lower him. That's pretty much it's a pretty standard uh platforming challenge. Yeah, so um you may have noticed uh my relic count. Uh to to re record this session because I, I I'm recording this game off of my desktop. I'm using the I'm using the, the same desktop I used to record for the review uh, to record this level, and uh, the save files for the desktop are different than what I have on the laptop, so I'm using my close to completed save file for the review, which is why my relics are at 37. <laughs> so, I've, I've done a level before, so when we've seen the relic 
uh, at the end of the level, it's not going to have the same sort of glimmerish sheen to it. It's going to look pretty dull because it's a relic we've collected before already. Uh, so, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> I'll tell you, this playthrough has been quite a mess recording-wise. And I, I don't want to... I don't, I don't feel comfortable just blaming the game for it. I, maybe it's just ignorance on my behalf about how this works or how that works. Because, again, I didn't have any problems recording footage for the review whatsoever. Like, mods worked the way they wanted to. And nothing, I wasn't losing my body over any shit. <laughs> it, it's just suddenly we want to start recording for a Let's Play. Things start going AWOL. I don't know why. I mean, it was funny. <laughs> and people seem to be enjoying it. So they, I mean, that's, it's good for a laugh. But at some point, you're like, you know what? I want to progress without something fucking me over. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, I just haven't. We, I don't think we've, we've only had like maybe two or three recording sessions where things turned out A-OK. -okay. But even when things do turn out A-OK, -okay, sometimes you can just do a dickhead move anyway and lose the footage anyway <laughs> because you know, I can't have a break. I can't. There's no rest for the weary. Ugh. Oh, my God. Uh, we're just about done the level, though. Uh, and we're also going to encounter another sort of uh, glitch here <laughs> because uh, the, la the last piece of evidence I just collected uh, pinpointed the Express Owls as a potential culprit. Now I'm gonna collect this one, and it says the Express Owls again, and now suddenly I'm a culprit <laughs> on the, uh, the fourth to the right on the, uh, those pictures there. What? I didn't collect that picture. I thought I collected the Express Owls picture, but now I did twice. But what it really meant is like, cause the last piece of evidence you collect is supposed to be yourself. You you can, you can blame yourself for the murder if you wanted to. I recommend blaming yourself because I think that's one of the better endings of this. Because there is a different ending for each culprit that you can pinpoint towards. Uh, one for the owls, one for the conductor, one for the express owls, one for your, uh, your aunt, one for yourself, and one for the uh, the murdered uh, victim himself. In fact, if you look closely at him right now, you kind of see he's blinking. Is he really dead? <laughs> but you can see what everyone's saying here. Calls, protect and serve at all costs. Express owls, we got eyes everywhere. We saw nothing. What you're looking at me for? Peck neck. When Brace was a racial slur, I had to do it or the voices wouldn't stop. That's my favorite one. You can't blame me. You can't blame a dead owl. Uh, so it kind of gives you the fact that he's not really dead. Uh, when I was recording footage for the review, uh, I picked the dead owl. Because I thought this was one of those things where you had to pick the right culprit, otherwise you fail the mission. Uh, so I figured, I highlight the owl, and he's he's saying something. He's like, you're not supposed to be saying anything, you're supposed to be dead. So I figured, okay, he's probably the right one. But then I found out that it doesn't matter who you pick, there's a different ending for everybody. Uh, the reason why I like picking a uh, hat girl nowadays is because <laughs> you're, you're painted as a psychotic kid who has a lust for blood that as soon as you saw this and that, you were triggered and you couldn't help yourself and you just lost your fucking mind. The biggest missed opportunity for this scene right here is that I wish I was wearing the Sonic hat. <laughs> I wish I was wearing the Sonic hat because, man, if that isn't fucking Sonic.txt right there, <laughs> you get those diehard fans that just lose their fucking mind if you say this or that. Uh, but what are you gonna do? I like this ending anyway. I just like the zoom ups to the face. It gets more psychotic, and the video gets more of a red tint. But then the uh, the murder victim outs himself out, and he tells him that no, nah, I'm not really dead. I was just had a fake rubber knife. Of course, all this is just for show because the conductor wouldn't really kill anybody. He just wanted footage for his next film. Asshole. I don't know how. I want to know how many takes it took this guy to like roll all those goddamn R's because he pronounces like murder, like murderer. I can see. I'm struggling just saying that right now. <laughs> and again, I do think Peck Neck is some sort of racial slur. I think not. Here, take this thingamajig and get out of here. Ah, uh, yes. I was saying, when you keep dialogue intact, this level is close to 20 minutes long. <laughs> I'm wondering if the bottle of ketchup used as for fake blood is also a Metal Gear reference. And then again, this entire chapter could be just a big Metal Gear reference. Right down from the stealth mechanics, how you gotta travel here. Uh, handle this mission. Right down to the music, because uh, the chapter... Uh, I love... 
when we, when we traveled through Dead Bird Studios the first time, we had that piece that was clearly based on uh, MGS2's soundtrack, uh, specifically Twilight Sniping, uh, the theme that plays when you're helping... Um, uh, fuck, what was her name? It was Emma, yeah, Emma. <laughs> Emma threw uh, uh, the dock, sniping birds and other shit. <laughs> Never forget. Never forget. Uh, but uh, when you're going through the train station looking for clues and all that, again, we get pieces that are quite clearly also inspired by Metal Gear Solid. And hey, I, whatever, because I, I, I love the callbacks. I love the I, I love the piece that plays before the mission truly begins, like when you're just talking to the crows and getting the mission started. The, the lovely saxophone, please. Oh my god, like my ears are in absolute heaven right now. And if you can, I mean, if you really like this game, uh, I mean, besides obviously supporting it on Steam or whatever, what I have you, please do buy the soundtrack, because the soundtrack is phenomenally done as well. And uh, I, I love listening to uh, certain pieces repeatedly. Murder on the Isle Express, uh, the bonus stage music. The main theme of the game actually is really good. We're not going to be hearing that until, like, endgame, like near the credits, but that piece is fantastic as well. So anyway, our, our next level is the Big Parade. This is not one of my favorite stages in Chapter 2. Actually, it's one of my least favorite stages in Chapter 2. It's not... It's not a bad level. I just think for as it's very minimalistic in objectives, and it gets repetitive pretty fast. But basically, the gist of it is uh, we're leading a big parade for DJ Groove's film. We got we got a dress for the occasions. We got the marching band outfit. Looks cute. It's on right. Uh, you can still switch hats and all if you want to. It is, I don't think it's mandatory to have the hat on, but either way. Uh, the big gimmick about this is that you are simply biding your time until the time relic is released from the party ball as like a big grand finale of the level. Now you notice that little tether that's behind my back because uh, I'm wearing a marching band outfit, I gotta lead the marching band. The problem is the marching band will never stop moving and if you come in contact with them they hurt you. If you ever played Mario Galaxy? or uh, I guess Mario Galaxy 2 to be more specific, they are the equivalent to the the cosmic clones. The things that constantly materialize, they mimic your every move and you gotta keep going because if you bump into them, you get hurt, every, every four hits you're dead. Yeah, you have to constantly be on the move in this level. You cannot stop worth the damn. So this is the entire level right here. It's not a humongous level. It's a sandbox, basically. It's a big square and you gotta roam around until time runs out. Uh, there are like, I think, three separate instances of it you have to do here, but while you're waiting for that timer on the bottom right to fill up there, uh, the thing that kind of looked like a face with two eyes, you're waiting for that meter to fill up until the very top, and then when that happens, it triggers the next event. Uh, in this case, we have to turn on the pyrotechnics, kind of look like little uh, oven timers here, which is a little weird. Uh, do keep in mind of the marching band while you're hitting those, because you don't want to stand too long, again. Uh, if you want a good score for this level, you have to you have to keep a lookout for the DJ Groove's icons. Every once in a while, you'll see a DJ Groove's icon uh, materialize somewhere in the level. I don't think they spawn during the events. So, like when you got to turn on the pyrotechnics, you got to deal with that first before you can collect more DJ Groove tokens. Uh, but if you want a high score, you have to collect as many of those tokens as possible. But they won't be on the screen forever. Uh, because, as you notice, some of the DJ Groove icons, well, not some, all of them have this little orange meter that slowly de depletes. And if you don't get to the icon in, before the meter depletes, the, it's gone and you just lose some, you lost some bonus point opportunities. So, okay, that's one part of the level done. You had to activate the pyrotechnics. Now, the pyrotechnics, unfortunately, for Hat Kid, is a new hazard. So, every once in a while, you may see a rooftop light up with the projection screen like no it's counting down to like a a grand debut like the roof that's happening that's right in front of me when the countdown reaches zero the roof will light up in pyrotechnics uh, sparklers dazzlers what have you it's pretty to look at but it might as well be lava because you're not supposed to touch it. if you touch it you get hurt don't do that so now that the pyrotechnics are on we got roofs that we got uh, roofs that will randomly light up and you have to keep an eye out for that so that's the dj groove token i'm talking about there Got it just in time. We got another one up there that's slowly running out. But luckily, and because I really don't give a fuck, I'm, <laughs> I'm using Lilac's headpiece for the uh, that third. That jump is so fucking fun to use. <laughs> I love It's one of my favorite mods in the entire game. Uh, and it's a cool thing, too, because this mod 
along with, uh, I think, uh, Raz's hat from Psychonauts, were officially implemented into the game by the developers themselves. It's a lovely little callback to, uh, like, uh, well, Freedom Planet, because it's another successful indie game, and Psychonauts, because this game, a game that this game takes a lot of cues from. Uh, Raz's hat is, also, is pretty fun to use, too. It's good for when you want to get on the move on the ground if you don't want to use the Sonic Hat, because the Sonic Hat is kind of OP in terms of ground speed. Uh, might be showing that off later in terms of what I mean. But Lilac's headpiece, that, that the Cyclone, that the, the, the horizontal distance you get from that makes it such a joy to, like, dash through shit. It's it, great for speed running too. Like, I, I know it's it's not part of the official game, so I know some of you might think it's like cheating in a sense. And, you know, I, I, I don't blame you. I, I do agree that it's not part of the intentional game design, but I have so much fun using it. <laughs> it is so fun to use. But this is, I believe this is our last hazard. So what we do now, in conjunction of having the pyrotechnics available, we now had to activate these three buttons. Now, the, the problem is that during this, you not only have to deal with the, the sparkling roofs, you also have missiles that are that lock onto your location and try to blast you out, yeah, like that. They try to blast you out of the sky. And that, that's just, that's more danger on top of more danger. So you have to now avoid pyrotechnics, the goddamn missiles, and the marching band, most importantly. The marching ban, ironically, is probably still the most dangerous thing because you're trying to time yourself just right to make sure you don't get hit by the missiles, but eh, you didn't see the marching band slowly creeping up from behind, and that's what you get hurt by. The floor uh, below the buildings is also a hazard. You know, I mean, it's people down there cheering you on. They're excited to see this film, uh, you know, in the process of being completed, but they're a little too rowdy, and as such, there might as well be lava. So if you fall down to the crowd, you'll get hurt. The good thing is you'll at least get bounced up. Think of uh, like Mario getting hit with lava in Mario 64. You'll get hurt, you'll bounce up, and you're like holding your ass, and you get back to where you need to go. And that's it. That's the end of the big parade. Again, uh, my only problem is that because the level is a little small and the objectives are pretty minimalist, it just drags on a little long. That's my only problem with it. There's not much to do and see in the big parade. You know, it, it's about the spectacle, I suppose so. Then I think you could have done that with a little more interesting level of design. Either way, I got all the damn DJ Groove tokens, and because of that, he was able to take the lead in the score. But uh, this file already had the conductor as the big bad of the chapter, so we're not going to see DJ Groove as the... Uh, the, the leader of this stage. But that's all the time we have for today. Again, I want to apologize for not getting this up earlier with Elliot and Sabrina, but shit happens and we got to make compromises here and there. Here's the end card for you lovely folks. You can catch the previous part over there and next part, which should be available uh, hopefully on Friday. And now we can get the order back to the way it was. And we hope you guys continue to enjoy the Hat in Time playthrough. It's a fantastic game. If you haven't bought it already, please do check out my review on some call me johnny if you haven't already i can go more in depth to why i think this game is a great time and why you should consider buying it either way that's enough of my uh, dick suckers right there i'll catch you guys next time